So hi everyone, uh, today I have uh, Joe Morris from Reflections. Um, so Reflections is a not-for-profit organization reducing the impact of asbestos on the community. So I'd just like to introduce um, Joe and uh, ask her to um, you know, talk about then Reflections and what uh, it's all about. Hi Louise, thanks for the opportunity just to share with your community. Um, I guess prior to 2010, you would have been asking the wrong person because I knew very little about asbestos, even though we're building designers and they're, we're out and about all the time. Um, and I couldn't pronounce mesothelioma <laughs> <laughs> as we were just practicing. <laughs> um, but my father was diagnosed with mesothelioma in 2000, early 2010. He had been a builder most of his life. So he was your classic second wave they call them waves, there's been three main waves. Um, the building industry, people that worked with the asbestos containing materials. So he wasn't terribly surprised, but it was still a devastating outcome for us, of course. Um, that became a catalyst for me, not only learning a lot more about what's going on with asbestos in the community, dad was um, given six to nine months to live and ended up living seven years, which was awesome. Yeah. And in that time was challenged to write his memoir, which we put together, and that was entitled Reflections Through Reality, published in 2015, um, which became a catalyst for setting up a foundation by the same name. Oh, okay. So that's where the, the reflections then came from. Yeah. So um, I suppose that we really wanted to sp speak with you, Joe, because... We know, especially at this time, um, a lot of people are at home carrying out their ho own home renovations, um, DIY work, etc. And, you know, there's essentially a lot of homes within Australia that have asbestos containing materials. So um, what would be your advice then, um, you know, and, and really um, highlight the dangers of asbestos? Um, what, what would you say about that? Mm. Well, you're right. Um, I, I wonder if we're going to look back in 30 years' time in history and go, what happened 30 years ago that we now have another wave of sufferers? Unfortunately, asbestos has left a devastating legacy, particularly in Western Australia. We have the recorded highest cases of mesothelioma in the world and possibly the most in situ asbestos of all the states. So we're in a bit of a hot spot here. Um, having so much it was in over 3,000 products asbestos a lot of people don't realize how That's expensive lot, it yeah. was yeah it is yeah. and it's in all of our houses well anything built prior to it wasn't actually banned till the end of 2003 people don't wow. realize how late it actually was yes yeah, so, it's, so it's actually really everywhere really in houses before that that period of it time it is then. and being the nature of the product is that it does break down over time um, it was never meant to be left, particularly fibre offences, never meant to be left in situ for that long. So with weathering and just condi conditions, it has broken down. People don't realise the risks of the fibres because you can't see them, smell them, taste them, they're invisible, um, but they're deadly. Yeah, yeah. So it's a really um, a big thing to be aware of because essentially I feel like people... Um, you know, that maybe are taking on their projects and I would feel that like they're a little bit bulletproof to this, that, oh, yes. it's only, you know, let's take out that vanity or knock down that wall. It's only a bit of, um, you know, fiber in the air. You know, as you said, you can't see it, can't smell it. It's not really going to harm me. So what would be your message to those people, um, you know, that are doing those projects at home? What would you, what would you say to them? Yeah, you're right, Louise. And I'd probably be in the same situation if it wasn't for the last 10 years, really. Um, you, A lot of people, and again, I'd probably think the same, that you have to have long-term exposure to it. We, as part of Reflections, we run a support network for sufferers. And I've met a lot of lovely people over the years, many of whom are now part of what they're calling the third wave, um, which are the... Um, non-occupational exposure, yeah, um, yeah. incidental exposure. We've lost a 47-year-old a couple of years ago and wow. his exposure was pulling down his um, fibro chicken run with his grandma when he was seven. So, And it only takes really one instance, you know, like, it's not like as if this is a continuous, um, you know, exposure to it. It can just be that one instance then that, yeah. that can have, a, have the effect yeah, I think there's a lot of misconception around that. Um, there's no known safe level of asbestos exposure, and that's yeah. what we need to be remembering. Yeah, so just no no exposure 
all together is, is just it's probably fine. the safest option. So how would you um, advise someone to, um, you know, if they come, if they are doing a home renovation project, um, what would be your advice then in regards to asbestos removal? If they're not sure, definitely take care. Heed the message and do the right thing. I wouldn't recommend anybody um, be involved with removing it themselves or handling it themselves. I would suggest they need to get a licensed removalist in and I can provide you with some contacts later on that you can attach to them. Yeah, that, that would be great. Yeah, I would definitely. Yeah, perfect. And they are still operating, even in these isolated times, um, under strict conditions. So I can also give you a list of guidelines. If you need to have any tradesmen on your property at the moment and you're concerned because of the COVID, there are rules and step, um, specifications that I can share with you. But Definitely licensed removalists. We are not in a position to be handling it ourselves. They're microscopic fibres. Yeah. And it's yeah. not just yourself that's at risk. It's um, Anybody you another example. It's the people around you. Mm -hmm. Someone else in our group at the moment, he's actually the third person in his family succession. Yeah. Um, and his was from helping his father when he was a child. Wow. So oh, you need to be mindful of your family around you as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, I and I think especially it's really poignant at this stage when, when so many people are at home and, and taking on all of, the, you know, all of these um, additional projects and works around the house. So where would you recommend, um, Joe? then we can get that um, information about reflections? Do you want to just tell us a little bit about maybe websites or, um, I, I can put it up on, I will have it for everybody um, up on our post, but um, do you want to give us any more information there? Please? Sure, so you can jump to www.reflections.org.au. Um, and we've got um, information there about our support group. If you know anybody who's affected by an asbestos related disease, we can support and care for them as well. But don't get to that point, please. I implore yeah, you. I know. Take, care. Take, take, us, take it seriously. You yeah. can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, cool. well thank you so much, um, Joe, for today and um, for giving us uh, and the, the group that, um, in, uh, that advice. And uh, yeah, well, hopefully, um, you know, we, we will be following reflections and, um, you know, it's a, it's a great place uh, and, and organisation to support as well. So um, thanks for your time today. Okay. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Louise. Bye-bye.